you're good looking. Have you ever wondered, is a rest day in a workout program really needed or can we just keep moving and still see our goals? Stick around as I answer that question as well as a couple of more related to our backs and exercise in this episode of Ask PJ Anything. Hi there, my name is PJ Wren and I'm a certified personal trainer and I have been for close to three decades helping the over 40 person. And why over 40? Well, because we do need a little extra love and attention with our workouts and heck, I'm over 40 myself. Now, this series is called Ask PJ Anything and just a heads up, today we're talking about rest days with your fitness program and scoliosis of the spine. Now, Jane from Arizona and Margie from Tennessee want to know how often I recommend a day off. A minimum one day a week I recommend off from structured exercise. That means don't do anything structured. Don't do a YouTube video. Don't do one of my workouts. Enjoy your day. It could be sitting on the couch Netflixing your butt off or it can go for a walk. You can go for a walk, a hike, a bike ride, still moving your body. It's very important. Note here that the body was meant to move. So. I want you to avoid though anything structured where you're going hard, you're paying attention to your heart rate, you're looking at what size dumbbells you should be increasing to. Get rid of all that, all right? Not only does the body need a rest, but the mind does as well because the end game here with fitness is that this is a lifelong journey. Now for me personally, I like to take two days off. Now for others, I've actually seen quite successful fitness programming for them taking three days off. So find what works for you, but a minimum of one day off a week from your fitness. Now on a side note, if you're not in any of my communities, cause both Patreon community, as well as over 50 fitness community, they receive monthly workout calendars that I program so that they can see the best results. And I program it in a way so that they also don't burn the muscles out. So if you're not a part of those communities and you're programming your own workout, please make sure that you have one day break in between all strength training workouts, or you can do split training. Training. So Monday, upper body, Tuesday, lower body, Wednesday, cardio, Thursday, total body, Friday, cardio, Saturday, total body, that idea. What we don't want to do is total body Monday, total body Tuesday, cardio, total body, total body. The reason being is you should be lifting heavy enough on your strength training days that you're actually breaking down the muscle tissue. Now it's during that rest, so that 24 to 48 hours after that, that muscle tissue does, does then rebuild and it rebuilds itself denser and stronger. So it thinks to itself, oh my goodness, you know, uh, who am I talking about? Margie from Tennessee, your biceps weren't strong enough. So when doing those bicep curls where you broke it down with those 15 pound dumbbells, I need to rebuild more tissue and that's what it does. And that's how we do get stronger. So make sure that when you're programming your own workouts out, that you have that 48 hour rest rest in between your lift days if you're doing total body. If you're doing split body, by all means, you can do them back to back because you're not working the same muscle group the next day. Now I mentioned that I was going to briefly, or I was going to touch upon scoliosis because Sherry from Iowa, hello Sherry. She says with scoliosis, do you have to be careful of twisting exercises like osteoporosis? I do a lot of cueing for osteoporosis on my workouts because I have quite a following of those with osteoporosis and osteopenia. So my apologies, Sherry, I don't really hit upon scoliosis that much. Technically with twisting exercises, you are cleared to do um, with scoliosis. So my recommendation is if we're doing an exercise, exercise that's weighted, that has a twist to it, try it non-weighted and see how it feels. Your back will let you know quite quickly. So just take it in a limited range of motion and you know, it feels pretty good. Then by all means, add the weight. For scoliosis, what we actually want to avoid for you is lateral flexion. So you are good to go. Um, I would probably recommend you as well, or for scoliosis, not to get too much into flexion. So, you know, ab crunches, um, instead doing dead bugs, planks, side plank, um, reverse curls, you can do that. But we don't do, if you're following the workouts, if you're following Patreon workout calendar, if that's where you're a member of, we don't do a ton of ab crunches in my workouts. Um, for that reason is I just find functionally as we get older, our planks, our side planks, our dead bugs are a much more effective way to train our core muscles. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and Hey, as mentioned, click that like, click that subscribe so we can keep working together. I look forward to reading your comments down below and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.
And welcome to my, be, you know, in between uh, two ferns, bad set. Anyways, uh, no, that makes all no sense. No sense. There is spicy language in this series. So if you have young ears nearby, please put your headphones on so they don't hear the spicy language. The last thing I want is your grandson, granddaughter, daughter, or son learning the word fuck from my channel. So, shall we get going? All right. I'd rather them learn it because of you.